mother's funeral, Mirabelle stood solemnly by the graveside, her heart heavy with grief from losing her mother to lung cancer just two days prior. After bidding her final farewell, Mirabelle returned home to an empty house. Standing in the quiet of her living room, her gaze fell upon the calendar on the table, its date marking December 8, 2023, a week past her own birthday. The realization struck her as she opened the fridge to find it barren. No one remained to inquire about her meals except her friend Sarah. With a heavy heart, Mirabelle succumbed to tears as she lay on the sofa, reminiscing about her last birthday celebrated with her mother. The following morning, Mirabelle found herself in a taxi en route to the supermarket for groceries. Lost in thought, she stared out at the bustling traffic. Upon arrival, she stepped into the elevator, its doors closing precisely at 10 hours 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Inside, Mira was alone with a weird-looking old man who told her that she should make good use of this opportunity, but always remember she cannot change fate and that there will be consequences if she tries to. The old man went out of the elevator repeating the same sentence. After his exit on the fourth floor, she was left perplexed. Then the elevator suddenly jolted to a stop before resuming its ascent to the fifth floor. Navigating through the busy aisles, Mirabelle was oblivious until she stumbled upon her favorite chocolate, its expiration date a shockingly outdated 2022. Concerned, she sought the attention of the manager, only to be met with dismissive glances. Disheveled and weary, Mirabelle paid for her items in cash, resigned to the manager's disregard due to her unkempt appearance. Mira rode back home in a taxi, gazing at the bustling traffic and people immersed in their daily routines, seemingly unchanged. Upon arrival, she noticed the flower vases by the doorway, now vibrant and fresh, a stark contrast to their wilted state when she had departed. As she stood there, bewildered, the entrance door swung open, revealing her mother Catherine, radiantly healthy and joyful. Mira, struck with disbelief, stood frozen, her mouth agape and eyes wide with shock at the sight of her supposedly deceased mother standing before her. Mom, are you... how... am I... Mira's words trailed off, unable to articulate her thoughts amidst the overwhelming astonishment. Catherine, amused by her daughter's reaction, jovially ushered her inside, teasingly remarking about Mira's penchant for shopping therapy whenever she felt troubled. Inside the house, Mira noticed subtle differences in the decor, reminiscent of the cozy, homely atmosphere from when her mother was alive and well. She pinched herself in a futile attempt to awaken from what she suspected was a dream, only to let out a yelp of pain. Concerned, Catherine called out from the pantry, prompting Mira to assure her that everything was fine, albeit uncertainly. Her gaze fell upon the calendar, its date reading December 8, 2021, exactly two years in the past. The realization struck her like a bolt of lightning. Had she somehow traveled back in time? To confirm her suspicions, she searched online for a specific event, finding confirmation in the trending topics of that period. Overwhelmed with a mixture of emotions, Mira felt a surge of gratitude for the opportunity to alter the course of events. She resolved to ensure her mother's health by urging her to undergo regular checkups, to confront her cheating ex-boyfriend Samuel with newfound strength, and to utilize her future knowledge to propel her coffee business to success. And perhaps, amidst it all, she dared to hope for the possibility of finding true love once more. Mira cherished the extra time she had with her mother, expressing her love and emphasizing the importance of her health. She ensured Catherine attended monthly checkups, maintained a healthy lifestyle, exercised regularly, and avoided smoking. Though she only vaguely alluded to her desire for her mother's long-term well-being, when questioned about her sudden intense concern. Turning to a dating app, Mira sought a handsome companion to teach Samuel a lesson. Her aim was to demonstrate her worth to him by being with someone she deemed superior. Vincent, an impeccably attractive man, responded promptly to her request, and they began conversing. Mira was transparent about her intentions, enlisting Vincent's help in making her cheating boyfriend jealous. Sympathetic to her situation, Vincent agreed to assist, and they arranged to meet in person. Their encounters became frequent, strategically timed for Samuel's friends to witness, eventually blossoming into a genuine friendship. Samuel noticed Mira's changed demeanor, 
and learned of her involvement with someone else through a friend. Confronting her during a date, Mira calmly explained her waning feelings and asserted her right to end the relationship upon discovering his infidelity. Stunned, Samuel could only leave in embarrassment, realizing his discreet actions had not gone unnoticed. Meeting Vincent at the coffee shop, Mira recounted the events of the previous night, thanking him for helping her end the toxic relationship with her dignity intact. Grateful for his support, she expressed her desire to continue their friendship. Vincent, in turn, confessed his fondness for her company and the morning routine at the coffee shop, cementing their bond further. Mira confided in Vincent about her business strategies, seeking his expertise as a seasoned marketer. Together, they devised plans to revamp the shop's offerings, including updating the coffee and snack menu, providing thorough training for the barista and additional staff, implementing a delivery service to ensure timely and pristine orders, securing partnerships with companies for premium coffee supplies, and introducing a reading section to attract students as regular patrons. Over time, Mira's Coffee Shop evolved into a thriving franchise, boasting a workforce of over 300 employees. It gained renown as a premier supplier of coffee and snacks to esteemed companies, consistently drawing in a bustling crowd of customers. As their friendship flourished, Mira and Vincent found themselves growing closer, though neither dared to confess their feelings. Aware of the transient nature of her time-traveling circumstance, Mira resolved to prioritize her business aspirations over any romantic entanglements, uncertain of when or if she might return to her own time. Vincent, content to support Mira as a friend and admirer, willingly bided his time, understanding the weight of her past heartbreak and the importance of her professional endeavors. Mirabelle made a conscious effort not to meddle in occurrences, despite her awareness before they happen, heeding the advice of the weird old man. However, those close to Mirabelle noticed a profound transformation within her. She evolved from the carefree, somewhat unremarkable individual they knew to an ambitious, cautious, and thoughtful one. Every action was meticulously calculated, considering its impact on others. It wasn't until the eighth month of Mirabelle's temporal journey that events spiraled out of control. A fervent admirer of a certain actress turned influencer, Mirabelle intervened when the star's financial downfall loomed. Out of genuine concern, she anonymously warned the actress against investing in a faltering company. Despite initial skepticism, the actress couldn't shake the doubt, especially since only her lawyers were privy to her investment plans. Despite the anonymity, Mirabelle's act of kindness bore fruit when the company's bankruptcy made headlines a month later. Encouraged, Mirabelle implored the actress to utilize her fame and wealth for philanthropy. Yet, when weeks passed without action, doubt clouded Mirabelle's conviction. She questioned the significance of the old man's warnings, convinced that altering fate for noble causes carried no consequences. However, a tragic incident involving her neighbor, Mrs. James, shattered this illusion. The morning of Mrs. James's accident, Mirabelle grappled with intervening to prevent it, conflicted between her compassionate nature and the old man's admonitions. Yielding to her empathy, Mirabelle urged Mrs. James to delay her plans and accompany her to the franchise, concocting a ruse involving a rice pudding recipe. Although the accident seemed averted, tragedy struck that night as Mrs. James fell down the stairs, sustaining a severe head injury. Haunted by guilt, Mirabelle realized the peril of altering destinies. While her intervention with the actress appeared successful, the unintended consequences with Mrs. James underscored the danger of tampering with fate. Mira's anxiety intensified regarding her mother's health as she grappled with the realization that fate remained immutable. Accepting the inevitability of her mother's eventual passing within a year, Mira resolved to cherish their time together, creating lasting memories and providing care to alleviate the severity of her illness when it is diagnosed. A month later, during Catherine and Mira's hospital visit for a checkup, the doctor delivered the sobering news of Catherine's lung cancer diagnosis, thankfully caught early due to regular screenings. Despite the doctor's reassurances of a potential cure through surgery and chemotherapy, Mira harbored a subdued skepticism, knowing deep down that the outcome remained unchanged. Throughout the six months of treatment, Mira stood steadfast by her mother's side, offering unwavering support and encouragement. Yet, in the solitude of her thoughts, she grappled with the weight of her secret time-travel burden, 
silently mourning the impending loss. Despite Vincent's supportive presence, Mira concealed her inner turmoil, attributing her distress solely to her mother's illness. Following Catherine's successful surgery and chemotherapy, Mira's anxiety persisted as the looming specter of her mother's death loomed closer. Though relieved by her mother's cancer-free status, Mira remained haunted by the unintended consequences of her interference with fate, particularly as she observed the dire condition of their neighbor, Mrs. James. Sleepless nights plagued Mira as she wrestled with the repercussions of her actions, her mind tormented by uncertainty and guilt. Meanwhile, Vincent, ever supportive yet puzzled by Mira's distant demeanor, resolved to stand by her side unconditionally, patiently awaiting the day when she would confide in him about her inner turmoil. On the 5th of August, 2023, Catherine celebrated her 50th birthday, exactly a week before her impending demise. Accepting this fate, Mira ventured to the supermarket to gather supplies for her mother's birthday festivity, oblivious to the circumstances surrounding her time travel. Unknowingly, stepping into the same elevator at precisely 10 hours, 10 minutes, and 10 seconds a.m., Mira experienced a sense of deja vu as the elevator abruptly halted, lights flickered, and then returned. To her surprise, the peculiar old man entered the elevator, greeting her with a knowing smile before the doors closed, ushering them to ascend. Suspecting her return to the present, Mira confirmed her suspicions when none of the items on the store shelves bore expiration dates beyond 2023, further validated by an online search. Fearful of returning to an empty existence without her mother or Vincent, Mira attempted to revisit a time when her mother awaited her at home by entering the same elevator and selecting the fifth floor. However, the absence of any disturbances or temporal shifts signaled the inability to manipulate time at will. Overwhelmed by grief and confusion, Mira pondered the purpose behind her involuntary journeys and the cruel irony of experiencing moments she would soon lose forever. With a heavy heart, Mira proceeded to purchase groceries and returned home, resigned to her lonely reality. Just as she reached her doorstep, her phone buzzed with Vincent's name, sparking a glimmer of hope. Could his call signify his continued presence in her future and, by extension, her mother's survival? Mirabelle stood in front of the door, unable to answer Vincent's call or open the door to check whether her mom was still alive. Just then, the door was opened by a healthy, surprised Catherine, who asked her why she came back home after leaving with the plan to attend a meeting at the franchise. So, I also get to have my franchise? Teary Mira thought as she hugged her mother tightly. I missed you, Mom. Please stay healthy. Please do not leave me all alone, she pleaded. Confused, Catherine hugged her daughter nonetheless. I will always be here for you, Mirabelle, and I love you too. Let's go inside, she replies. They sat on the sofa in the living room, with Mira holding her mom's hand tightly as she kept staring at her, feeling relieved and thankful. Mom, have you heard about Mrs. James? Mira asked. Oh, yes. She stopped by to say hello on her way to the park for a walk. You know she still has some stiffness from the fracture site any time she skips her morning walk. Mirabelle was glad that her interference did not cost Mrs. James her life. The doorbell rang a few minutes later. Catherine opened the door and returned with a worried-looking Vincent. What happened, Belle? Why didn't you show up at the meeting and also not answer my calls? I was worried that you might have had an accident or something. He says this as he sits beside Mirabelle, who keeps staring at him without blinking her eyelids. Vincent gave Catherine a look with the question, Is she all right? And Catherine gave him an, I have no idea what happened to her. Look. Mirabelle could not contain how happy she was to see the person she loved and thought she had left in the past sitting just beside her. She may have been busy taking care of her mother and anxious about what the future would be, but she did fall in love with him and was aware that he reciprocated her feelings. Being the thoughtful person he is, he decided to take things at her own pace, allowing her to settle her problems first. Now she has nothing to stop her from living a happy life with her beloved and her mother, so, Mirabelle did the last thing any of them had ever imagined. She grabbed Vincent by the collar and joined their lips together. I love you, Vince. Please let's spend the uncertain future together. She speaks. Belle, are you proposing to me? He asked, still surprised. Well, yes, 
and no. You will still have to ask for mom's permission and also bend a knee. She winked. A happy Catherine excitedly said, Oh, I do approve of you, Vincent. Well then, I should go and get a ring so I can bend a knee before she changes her mind, Mom. They both laughed heartily. The end. I hope you enjoyed watching The Time Traveler. For more epic stories, please subscribe and turn on post notification. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.